BQ is back, baby, and this is the biggest week in American birding. Hit the music. Break it down. We are live here at the McGee Marsh Boardwalk in Northwestern Ohio for the very first day of the festival. People are probably wondering how on earth the biggest week in American birding ended up in rural Ohio. But I'll tell you this, folks, it's all about location, location, location. Situated on the shores of Lake Erie, when these warblers and other songbirds are migrating and they get to this location, they basically hit a wall that they can't cross. So instead of flying over the lake, they land right before and they enjoy the premier and pristine habitat that's available for them throughout McGee Marsh. And the amazing folks at Black Swamp Bird Observatory sponsor this great event where people can tour the boardwalk and look at these neotropic migrants that are typically all the way up there, literally at knee level. So these migrants are traveling very long distances, often from South and Central America. And when they arrive here, they're exhausted. So these warblers are literally dripping from the trees everywhere you look. Kate May warbler in the lawn grass on the edge of the parking lot. I've literally seen more warblers today than I have in all of 2018. I'm gonna to head to the McGee Marsh Boardwalk now. I'm gonna to try to be as quiet as possible. Document some footage. This is a bay-breasted warbler, literally right here. I can't even use my lens on it, it's too close. This is actually my second time here today. In fact, about 12 hours ago I was here, did a little stroll to experience the boardwalk for the first time. Bay-breasted warbler, a little closer now. This is a black throated green warbler. I can't even put it in my binoculars. Look at this. I wasn't kidding when I told you this was the biggest week. Look at all these people. And this is after the morning rush. Blackburnian warbler. Black throated green warbler again. Still within arm's reach here. Black throated green warbler. Pathonitary warbler here. No binoculars needed for this one. Pathonitary warbler, even closer. Wow. Black burning warbler again. Look at that fiery orange. And you know, everything you've seen so far has been in the first 30 feet of the boardwalk. Unreal. Black-throated blue warbler. American red start. Black pole warbler. You sick of warblers yet? I'm not. Definite highlight of the day, taken earlier when I was here this morning. Golden winged warbler. Mama mia! Give you a warbler break here for a bald eagle perched. And 12 hours later, folks, this train keeps on trucking. Chestnut sided warbler right there. Another one. Only a half an hour till sunset, and I'm still getting new warbler species for the day. This place is truly the warbler capital of the world. Hooded warbler in here. Flirting away. American woodcock, a shorebird species that's a master of camouflage. Straight chilling right now, right off the boardwalk. Tell you what, all this phone scoping through my binoculars of moving warblers through layers and layers and layers of foliage has made me a tired birder. That's a black burning warbler with an arm's reach, folks. This place is truly warbler mania. Left the crib this morning at about 5 a.m. Led a birding trip throughout Erie County, Ohio from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and racked up a total of 107 species for the day. Mama mia! Here at the Mommy Bay Lodge and Conference Center, which is where they have the vendor set up for the biggest week in American birding. Cliff swallows nesting right here.
I really do want that black Bernie and Warbler blanket, but it's time to get back to birding. Let's go. This town is so overtaken by birders that even the NOCO gets it. Back at it, baby. In the field here at a place called Howard Marsh. My second time here today, but the first time I was here, I was with a tour group, so I didn't want to film because I was working, showing people birds. A location recently opened to the public. This is part of the Metro Park system here in Ohio, and it's an amazing, very high quality habitat for lots of birds, especially migratory shorebirds. Imagine a public park designed by the city that's a high quality habitat enjoyed by both wildlife and people. Basically, Pennsylvania parks, you need to step your game up. A little shaky, but this frame here contains more American golden plovers than I have seen in my entire life. One grebe in the center of the frame here and some kind of half winter, half spring plumage. Is it behind the island? Bonaparte's gull in the background with the lesser yellow legs in the foreground. Man, this place is unbelievable. Much like the McGee Marsh Boardwalk, this place, Howard Marsh, is dripping with birds. This time, shorebirds. It's unbelievable. And proof that this is a high quality habitat because of all the species that use this location. If only parks in Pennsylvania were designed in such a way that were great outdoor spaces for people, but also beneficial to the environment. Guess what, folks? It can be done. So step it up. Look at all the birds that utilize this habitat here. Bonaparte's gulls, black-bellied plover, American golden plover, Caspian tern, forester's tern, short-billed dowagers, pectoral sandpipers, semi-palmated plovers, dunlin. And you instead want to build a park that's composed mostly of lawn grass used 12 hours out of the year instead of the countless hours used by migratory species? <sighs> Enough ranting. It's time to get back in the field. I really want to see just how big the biggest week in American birding is. So I'm going to go to the McGee Marsh Boardwalk on the first Saturday of the festival. It can't be that big, right? Well, here's one of the full parking lots here. And there's even a shuttle to take you to the boardwalk since you're parked so far away. Still walking, almost there. <laughs> it's the biggest. My third day here at the biggest week in American birding, and we ended our field trip today to Oak Openings, just southwest of Toledo, Ohio, with 79 species, bringing my overall total to 158 species for the long weekend. But folks, time is of the essence. A storm is a brewing, and there's a snowy owl 20 minutes from here. Let's go. Here, parked on some side road. Can't say I love this location. And storm is coming. Holy smokes, on the wood pile. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a drill. This is an adult male snowy owl. Mama mia! So super shaky at this distance, but look, it just yawned. This is the first ever adult male snowy owl I've ever seen. And of all places that I saw it, it was in Ohio in May on a wood pile in someone's backyard. This biggest week is simply incredible. I can't believe that in spring migration, I had a snowy owl and a yellow breasted chat on the same day. Storm's coming though, time to take cover. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for an encore presentation of the snowy owl. That snowy owl was so sick, I could eat this hat. And I love this hat. Gotta send a very special thank you to the homeowners for letting me stop by and check it out. Super nice group of folks there. They were very excited to see the bird, but I don't think they quite understood just how excited I was to see that bird. One gentleman there said that my reaction, the typical wow to seeing that bird, was like the first lap of a NASCAR race being completed. But I had to tell him, no way, man. It was like winning the Daytona 500 seeing that bird. And after hunkering down for that storm, the sun has come out. And it's time to chase Neotropic Cormorant, brother. 
here at Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge, a place I've never been before, to chase Neotropic Cormorant, a species of cormorant native to the Gulf Coast and down through Mexico. Trumpeter swans, just like Lewis and Serena from Trumpeter the Swan. Simply beautiful. Neotropic cormorant wouldn't be a lifer for me because I've seen one in New Jersey before, which was a first state record for that state. I couldn't tell you how rare it is in Ohio, but I imagine that this bird must be pretty remarkable. Oh, just two indigo buntings right here off the side of the road. Wildlife Drive of Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge. Look at that blue. So I was wondering how rare Neotropic Cormorant was here in Ohio. The road is literally double parked with birders. Check it out, black neck stilt. But no Neotropic Cormorant, yet. Snowy egret in the background, great egret in the foreground, yep. but no Neotropic Cormorant yet. Very high and hovering rough-legged hawk, but still, no neotropic cormorant. No. Two American white pelicans, but still no neotropic cormorant. Now we've got a flock of American white pelicans. Look at those birds! Two bald eagles duking it out! Oh my gosh, look at this! Here scanning the spot. No neotropic cormorant. Yet. Got a couple of hardy birders that joined me here. Temperature is dropping. Morale is probably dropping too. And no neotropic cormorant. Yet. Still no cormorant. It's getting pretty cold, but the light's not getting too low, so I'm all in, still waiting. All people have left, it's getting colder, but the sun's out, and that means I'm going to find this bird. Well, two plus hours of being here looking for the bird, and I could not find the Neotropic Cormorant. Now, one might call that a miss, but ladies and gentlemen, after a day of birding like this, I'd prefer to call it a conclusion, because today was just unbelievable. And even though it's pretty cold and it's getting late, I would love to stay longer. But you know it's time to pack it in when the federal wildlife officer tells you that it's time to go home. I'm so bummed that this is my last day at the biggest week in American birding. And you can see out here that this place is packed. Packed with birds and birders alike, including this magnolia warbler. One of three bay-breasted warblers here. Excuse me. Made it out alive. Black throated green warbler right here in the tree in front. It's so hard to leave a place that's raining warblers, but you know, I have an eight hour drive back to Philadelphia, so I better get myself moving. But first, a bald eagle right next to his nest, right here in the parking lot. Okay, so maybe it's more than just raining warblers here. It's raining all kinds of birds, and they're just simply everywhere. I mean, even right here in the parking lot? Come on. But it's time I tear myself away from the biggest week. I'm cut off. It's time to go home. I've got an eight-hour straight shot back to Philadelphia from here, and you know, there is a varied bunting, which is a first Pennsylvania state record of the species along the way, but I don't need to see it. At this point, I've had so many great birds, I, I don't need to see it. So that was the biggest week in American birding, folks. I hope you had a great time. I had one of the most epic weekends of birding in a long time, and I wish I was there to enjoy it with more of my crew. But you know what? There's always next year. So until then, stay fresh and peace out, y'all. Just kidding. And now for the world premiere. Varied bunting. Folks from all over here. What a conclusion. 200 miles into my journey home, I couldn't help but pass it up. It was at a bird feeder right off the Pennsylvania Turnpike, making this my 454th life bird. 
And according to the gentlemen who were there, not only is this a first ever Pennsylvania state record, this is the second record of this species east of the Mississippi River in the United States. Whoa. Well, for real this time, that was the biggest week in American birding. I hope you had a great time. I most certainly did. And I'll tell you what, that was one of, if not the most epic weekends of birding I've ever experienced. So until next time, stay fresh and peace out, y'all.